your contact information now since you are an artist and you yeah. do a lot of things for your community. I want people to be able to contact you. So make sure I do that by okay. the end of the video that we shout, okay. that we shout you out, okay? Because it's right. dangerous for me. Okay, so um, I just wanted to come on today and talk to you about a couple of different things. One of the things I okay. want us to discuss is, what's that? The book, picking the up the pieces to 100 mm -hmm. Broken Promises, one of the best books I've, re I've read and oh. I really enjoy it. You gotta do and, all that. You gotta do that. I'm editing I'm this. I'm just being now. real. It's what, like I said, it's one of those things that I literally, I laugh out loud. I cried. I talked to the pages. Um, I was angry. Like mm -hmm. I went through the full gambit of emotions. And mm -hmm. anytime words can bring you to a full gambit of emotions you have to celebrate how powerful that is because yeah. it really that is a very powerful thing so as much as it might be blessy for you <laughs> i just need you to know <laughs> as much as it's blessy for you it was a very wonderful experience to actually read i'm glad that you took the time to read it since you're all through the book how was that yeah. how it was that um so, it, so reading the book for me was like having a, a long a extended conversation for you. And so there were points where I was like, oh, she's talking about me, right? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, she's talking about me. And oh my God, I remember that. And I remember, so it was like um, taking a tour guide down memory lane, a tour, a guided tour. That's what I was trying to say. Yes. Taking a guided tour down memory lane because mm -hmm. there are some points and moments that I remember this happened. I remember when this was happening. Oh my God, I remember. You know what I mean? Mm. And so mm. to remember my point of view from when it was happening and then to mm -hmm. read how it was affecting you, mm -hmm. it was um it was cool. It was some points were painful because I was like, oh I wish I had known more at that time to where mm. I could have been more help for you. And then there were also times where it was like word for word I remember that you know what I mean like mm -hmm. I remember that and finding myself in your pages was humbling mm -hmm. um, very very humbling and it was also every time I read it every time I read my name and what came after it I was just like thank God that I was able to be there yeah thank God I was able to be supportive thank God that even in the midst of whatever you know because generally our chaos is a shared chaos <laughs> when it rains, like right. hold the hands down the chaos road together yeah, we be like you know right we be like be we go, right you know and so because that's generally how things roll with us you know it was just it was very like i said it was humbling and then mm -hmm. it was i had a lot of moments where i was like thank god that we ride for each other the way we do Mm. you know yeah I appreciate that um I mean it's only natural that I will put you all through the pages of my books since you are literally intertwined in my daily life like <laughs> well that's how both of us is but <laughs> all I need to know is like I gotta pick a character name for you so that you know <laughs> through all my books like you'll appear through all my books <laughs> like <laughs> mm. so speaking of your books we're gonna get to it yeah you Yes. Wonderful books. I love your stories. You've always been a wordsmith. We together did our poetry sessions and yeah. our, you know, yeah. slams and yeah. girl, that was girl. That it was, was the good old days. That was the days. Day. Yes. What was, right. that, what was the name of her spot? The Mecca. The Mecca. At the yes. Mecca and the Black Coffees and going to St. Louis. Right, girl. Mm -hmm. Black coffee. Was just... uh, taboo. Taboo. Yes. Oh, we had yes. so much fun. So when I moved here, a yes. piece of me died. Listen, I feel the same way. Yeah. I feel the same way when Mecca closed, when Taboo closed, when Fine. I got more children. <laughs> you got them, they just here. You know, when the stork was like, hey, you got some babies for you. Kids, right. Yeah, so I feel you. I feel the same way. I, like, 
there's such a, a part of me, it became such an integral part of life. Mm-hmm. It was therapy, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It was the place where you could have therapy. It was the place you could feel like a star. It was the place that you could cultivate yourself as a writer. It yes. was the place that you could become inspired by other people. So mm-hmm. I totally understand because it, oh. it is entirely a part of my life I I, I miss so yeah. definitely. Me too. I really wanted to start something up when I came here. Mm-hmm. The culture is so different mm-hmm. in Alabama than it was there. They just were yeah. not like into the slam poetry, right. the open mics. Right. And then the open mics that I did visit, it was like rappers and twerkers. Yeah. And comedians. Yeah. Like everybody was together. Yeah. It wasn't like, okay, this That's is open mic right night for poetry. Yeah. Right. And so, when the poets did come up, it was such a different type of poetry than yeah. what I was used to. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. it was like, I had no outlet. And so I think when I talk in the book about my depression, mm-hmm. um, being separated from you, the because really in Milwaukee, I had a lot more support as far yeah. as you know. Yeah. That I can go to and... Um, right just have that those times with just socialize with and when I came here I was very isolated right and so they can cause that I feel like that too when the stork bought them babies yeah that stork that darn stork (laughs) change your address when that that stork brought them babies it was that same type of feeling because it was like very much a family very much a community it was Mm -hmm. very much a place where and, and in truth, poetry is a profession of your soul, right? Yes. And so, the people that you get accustomed to seeing every week, the people mm-hmm. that you get accustomed to hearing, like we are all therapeutically holding one another yes. as we listen to each other's words. We are all therapeutically supporting and rooting for one another, mm-hmm. and to have that. You know what I mean? Because it's such a bubble. It, it was such a it bubble. Is. Oh my God, it was. You know, and so yeah. to have that full support where people, were, you could say the stupidest combination of words and people were like, that's all the hope. Oh my God, you know. <laughs> or they like, right. to say. Exactly. Like, exactly. This how you could fix that. Exactly. And so to have that wonderful, yeah. um, space of vulnerability and growth Mm -hmm. and creativity Mm -hmm. and then to not have that it is something that causes depression it is something that that causes a um a losing of oneself in a way Mm -hmm. you know what I mean it causes a definite loss there's a definite grieving yeah of not being able to go weekly to express my soul that way so I totally can't imagine well, I can and I can't, but not to the extent that you experienced it. Mm-hmm. Going from having all of that to having nothing. And then I think, too, um, we were in a very, we came up in the Milwaukee. When our poetry time was happening, yeah. it was very special here. Yes. It was a very special experience that was going on. And so I think that that's something, too, that we uniquely have together. Mm-hmm. Please sit back. I'm sorry. I have children. I, the store got some kids in my room right hey, here. Hey, nieces and nephews. It's you go. So pull, yeah, sit her back, please, because we don't want any baby accidents. Thank you. Yes, and that's part of them babies. They don't want you dropping their kids now. No, no. <laughs> that store need to pay child support, though. But anyway. Okay, so. <laughs> Where can you drop a nanny off? Thank you. Girl, I'm looking for one too. So if I find one and she got a sister, I'm going to go ahead and lend them, lend them to you. Right. So when I, that's what started the process of me writing the book mm-hmm. because I had I totally other outlets. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think. And I'm glad that you did it. Mm-hmm. What story stands out for you the most when you, when um, you read it? You were like, what story was it that you were like, oh my God, she put this in the book? <laughs> I think the story that made me say, oh my God, the most was when you were arrested. And I think the reason that that stood out to me the most was because it was so courageous for you mm-hmm. to include. You could have very easily omitted that. Mm-hmm. But for you to include it, and not only include it, but include it 
and take a responsibility for the situation Mm -hmm. that I may not agree that you need to take, but I may not agree that you need to take it. And I'm going to give you, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you you know. know more details. I do, I do, I do. But the fact that you took this position. I take that down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The fact that you were willing to be so vulnerable about that situation in your professional life. And and because I do know what I know about it, I was Mm -hmm. like, wow, like the the courageousness that flows through you. The courageous was the word that went through my head the entire time Mm -hmm. that I read. Um, I think even though I do know the stories, even though I do know about it, everything about your mind touches me so deeply. Mm -hmm. Um, Every story makes me want to hug the little girl Mm -hmm. and tell her, this monster can't beat you. This monster will never get you. This monster may have lurked in your closet. It may have been under your, your bed. It may have been in your shadows, but you are so bright at this point that nothing this monster tries is going to be successful. And mm-hmm. it might it might scratch you a couple of times. It might nip at your toes. It might nip at your back and claw at you. But no matter what this monster tries, it will not be successful. So that was really like, it was, you know, it's like the, when you're reading a book and you're rooting for the, mm-hmm. the heroine. There were so many moments where I was rooting for you as the heroine. As the hero of the book, there were so many moments, but um, that those those two things, everything mm-hmm. with your mom, um, everything about you with your arrest, those were definitely the two things. Those that were the two that. Wow, so, I was really debating about what to put in the book but here's the thing here's how i look at it the age that we are right Mm -hmm. very close couple years right right i don't care what people think right and they can google it and that mugshot finna come up and that mugshot right it's there you know what i mean there's nothing i can do about it and then other people have their own narrative about who i am right And so when you've lived a life where other people have tried to assassinate your character as much as they can because of their own narcissistic traits or whatever their issues are, they want to make you look bad because of what they've done to you. I said, I can tell my story better than you. Exactly. Exactly. I can tell them better than you. (laughs) You you did a really good job. Can I also say, Mm -hmm. when you, the, the portion where you say that I helped you when you were feeling suicidal that was also very like surprising surprising in the sense that i didn't know it was as bad as it was it was yeah yeah i don't even remember how much i put in the book yeah because i couldn't even verbalize Mm -hmm. the extent um that I was feeling just so despondent and so hopeless yeah. and people have expectations of you because of your education level right. because of the way that you mask and hide right. things. So I'm so good at masking that yes. you'll never really know yeah. what's going on what's with me. You would know because I right. can call you, like you said, I can hear it in your voice and right. it's not, it's, it's the absence of what's in my voice that you hear. Exactly. It's exactly of what's in my voice. It's not necessarily something that's in my voice. It's the absence of what right. you hear. It's, it's what I call a flatline voice. Yeah. You flatline emotionally. And so it, it sounds like it. Yeah. You don't have anything. And then it's also like a, I feel like depression makes mm-hmm. you breathless. It does. It takes so the life out of you. It does. Mm-hmm. And so it, there's a breathlessness if that it mm-hmm. that, that I hear because it I, takes effort yeah. it, it took effort for me to even try to communicate anything yes. with yes. anybody at that time and I still had to work yeah 
Yeah. I'm still having to work and talk other people off the ledge when I wanted to get right up there with them, right. move them off the side and jump off myself. Like so I still me, have to do my job. Mm -hmm. So can I ask you, do you find it when you are in this, this bad place? Mm -hmm. And you do want to be a ledge mate with somebody that you're supposed to be talking off. Mm -hmm. Do you find as a healer and as a health professional mm -hmm. that it distracts you to help other people off the ledge when you're standing with them? Does mm -hmm. it give you pause on your own jump? So... Good question. When I'm helping other people, I never think about myself, really. Okay. Um, okay. All of my time, energy, and effort goes on what they need at that moment. Part of that is because I'm an empath. Right. Daddy was everything. He took care yeah. of everybody else before himself. And yeah. also, growing up as a child in an abused home with a mother who did not care about how I felt, what I needed, and you know how I could be better I had to still take care of her in my pain exactly so I think that's a part of an abused child uh makeup yeah like you have to take care of your abuser mm -hmm. that becomes a part of your mo is that you my are daily. the taker care of mm -hmm. the taker care -er of all <laughs> these things you the know. yes there's the word ding 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 <laughs> the taker -er. you know what right, 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 right. Yes, the caretaker. Yes. When you're the caretaker, mm -hmm. you do f forget how, or you do learn, not even forget, you do learn how to cut yourself off. It just doesn't matter. Does it doesn't, doesn't, matter. Does it doesn't it matter to anyone else, else? it doesn't matter to me. Hmm? Does it help you with your things when you're helping other people? Is it a good distraction? Is um, it... I think what I do today is something I've always done. So it okay. doesn't feel different from different. when I was five or I understand. I understand or that. it's just now it's just part of my, I have, I have the education behind me. Um, one thing that did help is understanding what I was going through when I was going through it. Oh, okay. This is depression. This right. Is depression. Oh, right. suicidal ideations. Oh, I got right. I have means, right? I right. have a timeline. I was able to identify those things. And so the knowledge and education that I had is what mm -hmm. helped me to be able to identify it, but it didn't help to heal it or change it. It didn't okay. take it away. Okay. So just okay. because I put a name on it, it wasn't like I could be like, girl, this depression, get over it. You and it's done. It? And it's done. It's like somebody burning your hand. Right. Say, Girl, okay, stop stop your hand from burning and it's still fire. Right. You can't right. it, it, you okay, can't control it. it. And so yeah. those moments when you um were able to show up, and I know it was some stuff that I just didn't even want to discuss because the loss of my nephew, you know, yeah. uh, you were grieving the sweet boy and so I didn't even want to put that on you and it was so much pain and I couldn't relate as far as my own experience but my, my right. heart ached so bad even for that and so I I held back having those discussions with you because I wanted you to initiate it because I don't want to bring pain but when I was in my own pain I felt so guilty with you having to feel like you had to save me you know what I mean? See, so, I handle it differently because when I have to, so, I, you know, we both have the same situation in the sense of being a caretaker for an abuser and mm -hmm. understanding, like, I just got to step into this role. It doesn't really matter how I feel. For mm -hmm. me, um, especially when it's people that I love and I care about, mm -hmm. it helps me it provides a, a, a sense of um, grounding and regrouping for me okay. to be able to help somebody when I'm hurting so badly. Yeah. And so like, and again, cause God have us gone down that crazy road yeah. together. Yeah. Generally we, we write in this, we write Man. neck and neck in the level of craziness in our lives. And so, all the time. I have to be there for you and I have mm -hmm. to be able to step outside of my, my junk 
to be helpful because then I, you know, it allows me to feel something other than my junk. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's helpful for me. And so, like, I know one of the things, thankfully, in grieving the loss of my son, mm-hmm. I, I was able to understand other people were grieving as well. Like, I mm-hmm. wasn't so blinded by my grief. Mm-hmm. I understand that my loss wasn't just my loss. It wasn't mm-hmm. just my And maybe that's because I had other children at the time that I couldn't just shut myself down. Mm -hmm. I was very much aware and I felt guilty. Like, and I don't think I've ever articulated this to you or anybody else. Making the phone call to inform people that my son had passed away. I felt so Mm -hmm. much guilt. And I hate that you felt that. Calling you to tell you, I felt horrible. Mm-mm. because I knew it was going to hurt your feelings as well and I couldn't stop any of that you know mm-hmm. I, I don't ever want to be a bringer of pain to people that I care about and so to know that you didn't want to talk about it but you needed to talk about it as much as I needed to talk about it you know what I'm saying so mm-hmm. I have been I've tried and maybe I've not done a good job but I have tried very hard to let everybody know like Vizier, say his name. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It, it, I have his name written every morning mm-hmm. when I wake up. I have his name written on a sticky note that yeah. I look at, and I just every morning it's over there. You are not, you are not gonna make me cry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, just that experience, and just looking at his pictures, and I would be like, I know. I know. Just breathe. That's what you gotta do. You just gotta breathe. As you his gotta... aunt, as his aunt, if I feel like this, as his mom, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. And I didn't even get to hold him or snuggle him I or anything. You know I what know. I mean? Like it just happened so suddenly. So suddenly. I wanted to be there for you, and I hope I did not let you down. You didn't. I'm, I'm just gonna say, trying my best. To I'm gonna be tell there. you, like. I really feel like everybody showed up the way that they could and the way that they needed to. Because truth be told, like, he passed away and we came home from the hospital. And we spent that night, because by the time we got home from the hospital, the kids were asleep. And Mm -hmm. so we had to go through the whole police, all of that, you know. Mm -hmm. And then we just had each other that night and then that the next day we had to wake up and tell our kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was another yeah. wave of Exactly. Yeah. You know, real and it was so unbelievable. Like this quarantine is unbelievable. It was so unbelievable. Yeah. But you showed up one thousand percent. And we needed afterwards, you know, like we had to wait so his his burial date was the 14th was the 14th Mm -hmm. so he passed on the second we had to wait to the 14th to bury him that Mm -hmm. was a thing in itself you know what i'm saying like waiting up to that point and so he and i got to be together in solidarity Mm -hmm. in these moments in that moment in that whole like literally the fortnight that happened afterwards the the 14 days that happened after he passed, all of all the end of April, you know what I'm saying? Like me and him were together and everybody would say they whatever they were going to say. And so it all worked out the way it was supposed to. God mm-hmm. let me know this is who going to really be with you. And this is who going to feel so bad and stuck in their own that they can't Cause that's the other part of grieving is that people get so stuck in, in their I don't know what to say, right. but they, they don't know what to say. Like yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And then I think two people don't understand that um, the grieving. Okay, one second. Look outside the window and see if it's the package, and if it is, pick it up. If it is not. They come back Don't and let me know. Mm-hmm. Don't open the door, though. Um, go, no, no, no. Go and make sure she do what I said, please. Thank you. <laughs> like my daughter trying to peek in and see. Hey, What's she doing, boy? Hey, 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 hey boo. Uh, 
you know, so then people become complacent or they feel like I said something right when it happened, I don't need to say anything else. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those, like, when it first happens, it's horrible. But what's yeah. even harder is six months later. Yeah. Six weeks later, really. Yeah. And then six months later. Yeah. Because Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, cause then what happens is um people don't realize how many different things remind you of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like physically for me, I had to go through my body weaning, I had to go through my body not um like I held this I held him. I and I put him to sleep and so all of those different physical you nursed things. him. He was only what? Three, 21 days old. 21 days old. So your body was still healing from the actual birth. Actual, yes. And then you were nursing and so you had yes. to go through all of those different yes, physical changes. Physical changes and emotional changes mm -hmm. at the same time. I and am so was, sorry I cannot be there physically. But, you know, you were there. I knew that I could call you at 3 o'clock in the morning if I needed to. Yeah. I know if I wanted to pick up the phone and be like, I can't handle this today, sister. I'm broken. You mm -hmm. were going to hold that. And the fact that I knew that I could come and you would hold that for me, that meant everything. Because not everybody was willing to hold it. Mm -hmm. Not everybody was willing. You know how people be like, how you doing? And they really don't care. Yeah. They're just accustomed to saying, how you doing? Mm -hmm. And so they and then <laughs> you get the grief look. Oh, oh girl. Look. Yeah. The, and, yeah. And people get the panic in their face, like, oh my God, here she comes. Don't start telling me more. Don't tell me more. Exactly. I had, right. I had a girl. So I was in school. I had went back to school after he passed. And so mm -hmm. I had people that knew I was pregnant and then would be like, oh, how's the baby? Because they hadn't seen me. Right. Since I had left for that. And so it was like, I had a girl come up to me like, oh, how's the baby? How's it he? And I'm like, He's, he passed away. And she literally just looked me in my face and was like, you just messed up my whole day. Yeah. Oh. And walked oh. away from me. Like I had called her out her name or oh. slapped her in the face or something. Like her, like you said, so, okay. So I'm having a her kid. This exactly. Is about your kid okay. right and so it was it was learning just you know you just got to meet people where they at and some people mm -hmm. you just got to bypass and avoid altogether. you mm -hmm. know what I mean do you altogether. think everybody is worthy of having that information that's something that I no. had to learn everybody's no. not worthy of no. um having insight to yeah, your, no. your struggle while you're in it like I don't care no. if people read my struggle here because I have overcome right. these struggles, right? Right. But if when something new comes up, I'm not, you know, I'm not sharing with people outside of my bubble, outside of my circle until I've come into healing or understanding yes. or acceptance. Yes. I'm not going to um, invite people in. Right. To me. And so everybody's not even worthy of knowing what happened. Cause they can't, they can't take it, and most people don't care. Most people don't care. Most people don't care. Yeah, most people don't care. and I definitely, I love him so much that I hold him close. Yeah, so everybody isn't privy to him. I don't deny him. I don't um, not have conversations about him. But everybody yeah. isn't privy to having any any insight to that situation for me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, mm -hmm. there are definitely people that are not wor worthy of having that. Sit her back down, please. There are definitely people that are not worthy for that conversation. And that goes into another reason why I feel like you are so courageous to have written what you've written. And I totally understand you are past those things. You appeal mm -hmm. to those things. You have full understanding. But I think it's so courageous to speak about assault. Mm -hmm. And I what you did I know that's your thing I know that's something that I've always thought that you were so brave and so strong because you attack assault head on but the mm -hmm. fact that you speak about assault the fact that you speak about abuse 
the fact that you speak about the ugly things let's just put mm-hmm. it that way yeah and uh, and invite people to be privy to the ugliness that you've had to experience mm-hmm. it's just so courageous it's just so so extremely courageous and i um you are definitely one of the bravest people that I've ever encountered. It. Well, I think you need to meet more people and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, but is it bravery or just it is. Is it it's bravery? Brave. It is bravery because not everybody <sighs> not everybody is willing. So I may have to step out of frame for like 2.2 seconds because my baby is starting to get sleepy. Okay, um, get her. Here, bring her here. Bring her this way. Yeah. Yes, bring her this way. Be careful. If you need, sit her down and you stand up. Okay. Sorry. Naya, who has her? Naya? Yes, it's Nani. Oh, yeah. It's Nani. So she trying, oh. she's having her big sister morning. I see. See your big sister duties. Oh. Get up, get yourself up first and then get her up. So this is what it's like to be a working mom. Yeah. Yeah. Take care of things. Bring her this way. Okay. Mm. So this is how working moms get down mm-hmm. in the 2000 <laughs> to like from the 99 to the 2000. Right, <laughs> Give me the right. Time, please. <laughs> right. This is how real mommies make it happen. This is how we do it. And it yeah. doesn't stop. Look, it don't it stop. Don't. It don't. Interviews it don't, don't stop. stop. Life don't stop. It don't. COVID but that's, don't stop. that's real magic. That's the magic of us as moms, though. You that's know what it. I'm saying? That's and that's it. also, it goes into what we were just talking about. Because mm-hmm. when you got to take care of people, you got to take care of people. In and the midst of your own stuff. Straight yeah. up. Holding the luxury of doing that. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, too, before okay. you and and for you to um talk to us about your paintings cuz i know you had a gallery last year yes and i want us to talk about that because i want them to know you know how to reach your stuff but um i was in a a training mm-hmm. the last weekend week being before okay. last year, for my licensure and so okay. it was two days and i was already tired cuz you know i work from 8 to 8 yeah. monday tuesday wednesday 8 to 5 thursday yes. And then I worked from eight to five Friday. Right. And then Sunday, I had this training from eight to five and then I started back all over on Monday. So I was right. done. By Friday, I was like, forget that training. Right. Licensure, F therapy. I'm right. Work at Target, right? Right. Target's right. great. Probably make the same amount of money. Right. 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 So I Which was is a travesty. I was irritated. So it gets to the portion of culture being yes. culturally aware yes so hearing this white woman explain to me that i need to be culturally aware and that right. these are going to be some questions on the test really just threw me for a loop so i, I yes. did my deep breathing exercises because i practice what i preach right 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 i tried to listen so i could take from it what i need right. Right. You know, prejudge. I wanted to right. hear what she had to say. Right. I'm doing all this in my mind, but at the same time, I'm typing my teacher that's in here. Like, what the right. heck is she right. right. Off, forget this. Right. Movie. I quit. Right. 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 So she's talking me down. Like, just listen. This her voice. Just listen. You she ma. Just. It's okay. So I'm like, I'm gonna listen to this woman, but if she says right. something left, I'm putting something in this chat because it was right. I'm putting something in the chat box. So. Right. So she gives an example. There's gonna be some things on this standardized test, and I just want you guys to be prepared. So she gives an example that she was like, Okay, so here's the scenario, you know. Right. Something like this is gonna be so you walk into a store and it's a Hispanic woman and she's hysterical. She's on the phone and she says, my son is dead. My son is dead hysterically, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, people are around her and they're looking and they don't really know. And so when you see her, what is it that's happening? Okay. A, psychosis. B, it's just a cultural reaction to something else. And C, it was something else, right? 
had nothing to do with the fact that her son really could be dead. Right, right. Nothing to do with the fact that she absolutely could be in pain right. and grieving the loss of right. her That's child. Right. Yep. Totally dismissed that. Right. A was psychosis. B right. was it was a cultural thing, right? And C was some bull crap that I was like, and this is stuff she's pulling out of her head. And right. so people were defending her saying, well, you know, these were just examples she gave. The examples that you give are from your worldview. Exactly. From your experience, exactly. from your belief system. Where exactly. else are you pulling from? That's why right. I made oh, that person apologized for that racist statement or that person apologized. You need to forgive them. Forget that. This is who you are as a person. Yeah. I apologize for nothing. Right. I said, right. I said that I meant it. Even if I don't mean it today, when I meant it at that time, and I said it at that time, it's going to stand until the end yeah. of time, until the Lord himself says, you need to apologize for that. Right. And when it happens, I will. Right. I'm not going to apologize for the sake of somebody's feelings if I said what I meant. And I right. meant what I said. Like Nene said, it, I said what I said. Exactly. I, so she was saying that we need to be more culturally aware of, you know, other races and, you know, African-American teenager if he walks into the store and you know his pants are hanging low like all these different stereotypical right and statements that she right. made you want me to listen oh, to you find it and go like, in with it that you really want me to do because you're off the mark you're right. complete, you're perpetuating a, a, a stereotype mm -hmm. so when I put something in a comment, something about, so what you're saying is we need to take the standardized test through the eyes of feminist white women and ill-informed patriarchy white males. Right. Our answers need to come from your point of view because at the end of the day, we've always needed to be culturally aware. Right. That's we our, don't we, we don't have a choice. We have no choice. Everything around us is set up to destroy us oppress us or omit it's, us it's, right? everything is set up to be culturally insensitive everything yep everything because they have that's to consider our, no one but themselves that's such a ridiculous example because <laughs> even today my son has been gone for three years even today i can walk into a store on the phone and be hysterical about my son mm -hmm. and it's not psychosis it's not, it's not culturally something it's the re reality of you lost i child. lost my child so to hear our feelings dismissed, to hear our uh, emotional plights dismissed, to have mm -hmm. our grief mistaken mm -hmm. for something or belittled for something like culture or cultural right. issue or psychosis is so disrespectful. And that's why I don't seek out approval, acceptance, or understanding from anybody right. outside of my right. I can't right. even say race because some people within my race still don't really get it. You know what I'm right. saying? Outside of my compass, Thank outside you. of the people that I commune with. Yeah. If, if you get it, if you don't, you don't. And if you, you don't, don't, it wasn't meant for you to exactly. get. Exactly. Exactly. So when we look at stuff like that, when you have your experiences, because you have you have a partner, you're not yeah. a single mom. You have a partner, but when you're out here, you're navigating the world with your yep. children. Yep. What are some experiences that you've gone through, or what's something that kind of sticks out? Because you're still in Milwaukee. I'm in Alabama. They're both racist to well, me. Well, they are. I, I think they're the same degree of racism. Other, I think the only thing is that you might get it a little bit straighter. Yeah. Because it's the undercover. And I'm, not, I'm not racist, racist but you people should be doing things differently. You know what I mean? I'm not racist. I've had people ask me, um, mm -hmm. so how many babies daddies? Oh, okay. Because that's appropriate. Like, you know what I mean? I've had people say to me, um, well, I was just having this conversation last night. So I'm going to get a little closer. I don't know if you, you good people can tell. I have freckles on my face. Yes. If so... And in my youth, in my youth, right? <laughs> my, <laughs> right. I had really sandy red hair. Mm -hmm. And so I have spent a good portion of my life having people ask me, what are you? Yeah. Which to me is such an offensive way. It is. To ask mm -hmm. people, 
my baby is shaking my little table that I got my uh, mm. on, so excuse okay. me but it's such an offensive way to ask a person what are what are the what's their heritage mm. and ethnicity it's mm. such a ridiculous way what are you I'm a human being right is what I am I'm which woman. demon are you like right. which demon are you are you, you know, who are you right seriously That's I've had reason. um many 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 experiences mm-hmm. of people assuming because of the the street that I grew up on mm-hmm. that I couldn't possibly have any type of information outside of my one little block because mm-hmm. I li- I grew up in one of the roughest neighborhoods in Milwaukee mm-hmm. but it's like nobody expects for me to articulate myself well nobody mm-hmm. expects for me to use a word like extemporaneous Mm-hmm. And know what it actually I means. Think. I don't. Know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> hmm. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. What? Yeah. You know. So yeah. it, it's one of those things where, very much so, people are surprised. I've gotten my entire professional career. You're just so articulate. That's so demeaning. It's <gasps> so. And then, but the, the, it's even more demeaning when they turn their head and they look at you and it's. The, you're so articulate like they're right. baffled right by your ability to you speak so but even in school even in mm-hmm. school I have gotten an underslighted conversation mm-hmm. because I wasn't a mm-hmm. traditional student and so when I was able to achieve certain things it was like oh, how and you are a black mommy with all those babies you have oh all God. those children oh my how God. are you to do schoolwork <laughs> and and mother yeah like how could you mother? and be a partner how could you really? do such things you and see what I'm saying so it's just really one of those <laughs> where there is no acknowledgement like a, a white woman prime example there's a book and I won't mention the name of the book but I'll give like a small synopsis there's a book about a white girl where her mom died when she's like 16 years old Mm -hmm. her dad at that point was not really like around he had not been around it had been her and her mother so her mother dies and in her response to her mother's grief she decides to basically become extremely promiscuous okay Mm -hmm. and so she kind of like buffles through life she be she's a waitress and she's sleeping with people that come into her little diner she has a boyfriend but she's a serial cheater all Mm -hmm. of these things and he catches her cheating for like the 15th time and he decides to leave and then Mm -hmm. her world crumbles because he decides to leave and so Mm -hmm. she decides to hike and never ever doing hiking before there's a trail that goes from Oregon all the way through a certain part of California. And it's this, you got to be a real hiker to do this trail. It takes such a long time. It's almost like a pilgrimage trail, if you will. Okay. And so she decides to do this hiking on this pilgrimage trail in an attempt to clean herself up from drugs to clean herself up from promiscuity and she winds up um meeting a male hiker and sleeping with him in the middle then of her- she in the middle of her and then you know I mean? she okay exactly then she goes a little bit further and she comes across two guys and she's afraid she actually initially she isn't afraid of being a- assaulted but then when it finally dawns on her that she can be assaulted Mm-hmm. Then she retreats into her fear and somebody comes to her rescue. And long story short, this woman who was an extreme, extremely promiscuous, that was mm-hmm. a drug user, that didn't have anything. She is now a professor. <laughs> she is now a speaker. She's written a book about this whole journey she took. And it's being heralded as this most wonderful. She's she is celebrating. celebrating. Oh, okay. For, for being a oh. drug addict and a whore. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. I was abused and I had these, and I didn't do the drugs, but the drugs is around me. But if mm-hmm. I brought that story, it'd be like, oh, you little crack baby. Oh. 
Get yourself you are, together. Stop you are You know Get what I mean? Look by your bootstraps. Exactly. Sister. What's you wrong? Know, and that's the thing. I was so <laughs> offended by this book. <laughs> and it's like never in a a black woman cannot. Girl. Cannot. Could never write a book about being on a whole journey putting herself in harm's way on purpose doing drugs and everything because she completely put herself in harm's way on purpose Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i i was in harm's way and i did everything i could to not be in and it's still my fault Mm -hmm. i'm still i'm still supposed to own that i'm still supposed to say i should have done better i shouldn't have walked down my street with the sun mm-hmm. shining fully clothed before I got snatched into that garage. I shouldn't have did know that. that the sun was shining on your block at 7.30 in the morning when you were going to school, little girl? You couldn't I get mean, away from the rapist? No. Oh, my God. No, I shouldn't have did that. I yeah. shouldn't have. Yeah. I shouldn't have fell victim to these things. But mm-hmm. she totally celebrated her life, her economic status, her emotional that all of these things are now heralded because she did it. I am so over it. Can I'm, I over just say it. it? I'm over I it. I'm over it too. And you I'm know what? It. And that is why I want to bring light to the myth of a strong black woman. Yep. Where we are um, dismissed, yeah. disregarded, just pushed to the wayside. And we've learned yep. to do that to ourselves and to each other. And so right. I want to bring to the forefront the things that we experience, how we feel about them and how we come yeah. through them and how to make it better. So when people see you and hear your story um, yeah. about surviving the grief and surviving the abuse and the neglect that you've experienced, they can become empowered because they yeah. see that you're doing well. You're in the yeah. process of moving forward and leveling up as you do, right? right. And the same thing goes for me through my book, through your art, right? Yeah. These are ways that we express who we are in the yeah. hope of the betterment for not just ourselves, but for our communities. Right. I don't require any type of uh, attaboy, you know, I don't, no. I don't require that from anybody that has not lived my struggle. That's not exactly. a requirement that's not a desire if it happens if i have right. somebody that can empathize that's great you know that's that's for everybody whoever right. has been through it and have come through on the other side because we don't choose the life that we're given right at all at all but at the end of the day i don't have to appeal for all the masses and so no in my quest to eliminate these stereotypes about black women not feeling not loving not marrying yes. um not caring for ourselves and our children, those are lies and they need to be dispelled yeah. and they need to be um, done away with in our community. I can't control yeah. what's going on now with uh, these narratives that's out here on, on Instagram and social media and things like that. I can't control the narratives that they're playing right. with these black men spewing this hate, self hate. You know, the guy, the rapper who talked about raping a little girl and all that stuff. I don't know. Look up the battle rapper. Something real crazy, but. um, You talking about. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So he, you know, all that self-hate that's in our community. I don't even shine the light on that. I want to celebrate who we are, who have come through it, who are still working through it, who's figuring it out. And those who feel like they've figured out most of it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to give the light and the shine to people who are still lost. I want yeah. the people who are lost to get it together, and I hope that right. they do. But it's not my responsibility to try to force feed anybody anything at the end of the day. No. So I'm glad that you took this time with me. I love you so much. I love I, you. I would not be here, literally, without you. <laughs> I tell you that Look, all neither time. one of us, neither <laughs> one of us would be here. Girl, you would have been okay. Listen, okay. if it was not if it was not for you <laughs> being on the phone with me every morning when I was making bacon and eggs, yeah. when I was pregnant with the twins, if it was not for you, mm. every time I was like, I can't do this. I am about 
to lose my brain. I can't. <laughs> How many times? I probably cried the Nile River and the Indian Ocean when I was pregnant with them twins. And you Girl. listen to every single one. And rough. you told me, oh, it's going to be okay. We're going to be here. You cry with me too sometimes. Yes. You were so yes. good to me. So I'm telling you, because I would have been like, girl, I am over it. Call me when you had a baby. It was right. I was looking for a minute. I was playing. I'm going to go pick these babies up. Oh, I'm telling you. I'm going to go get a bigger. <laughs> We need a Look, I had I do? had no cheese to slide off the cracker. Okay, that cheese be slipping. That cheese was gone for a minute. It was I, cheese. I had up the hormones. It was some situational stuff going on. And then you had it some was. issues. It was. And so we all have those times when we are just yep. in need, and I'm just so yep. grateful to have you because for so long I was saying I don't have anybody. And yeah. um, that's a lie. Yeah. That's a lie. I've but that's had... a lie that depression tells you. That's right. a lie that depression, depression tells you. Because the depression is a lying bastard, and so yeah. is anxiety. Any other yeah. disorders that you have, um, mental illness is a lie within itself. Addiction is a lie. Yeah. And so it hopefully is. Um, people utilize their support system, and, that, and they celebrate their support system the way yeah. I try to celebrate you. Um, yeah for being there for me. So where can people find you on the internet? So I am on Twitter as the one uh, Nubian star. I am on Instagram as the original Nubian star. And you can find me on Facebook as Nubian star. You can find, actually there's two pages. Mm -hmm. Um, I I have a Nubian star art page. Yes. And then I have my Nubian star, just my personal stuff. But um, you can also always reach me at nubian.star at gmail.com. Um, that's also, but you can go to Instagram to see pictures of my art. You can also um, go on Facebook and see pictures of my art. But this is um, what I do to keep myself sane one for one (laughs) it's also what i do it's very important to me since i have daughters Mm -hmm. that they see images of black women Mm -hmm. that are not just about twerking that are not just about um hair and makeup Mm -hmm. you know because i feel like this is a time in the world where black women are celebrated but we're celebrated for things that i don't always feel are good right and so I um, want to create images of women empowered. Like I do a lot of, I have nudity women that are nude, but I do it mm-hmm. because I want to encourage um, loving our bodies for what they are. Mm-hmm. And I know there are so many things. I know for me personally, I was, I was a skinny little girl and then I became a chunky girl and then I'm short. And so I was thickums and then I was super thick mm-hmm. and then I was just round, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I was just round, you celebrate, know what I mean? Celebrate all that. I yeah. want to be able to celebrate every facet yeah. of womanhood that we have. I want to celebrate mm-hmm. light-skinned women, dark-skinned women. I want, but I want my daughters because my daughters in, are in several shades of the of the brown rainbow, and so mm-hmm. I want them to see. And there are different sizes and shapes, and so I want them to be able to grow up in a household where they know first and foremost that they are queens. All of my babies are of royal descent, and um, not they're not women where their bodies are the only thing that make them important. I want them to know that their minds. That they are, there's a crown atop their head, no matter what's happening. That's right. So, um, I try to make images where there are crowns at all times. I try to celebrate the fact that we always, we got a lot of hair and it's beautiful, however we rock it. That's Um, right. I want to celebrate the fact that we are voluptuous women Mm -hmm. and that we are of a stature, almost um, my version of black Amazon, you know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? It ain't about being tall. It ain't about being man-hating. It's about Mm -hmm. being strong and just being yourself. And just being who you individually are. Mm -hmm. And so very, very important to me because I didn't grow up seeing art 
that look like me. Like, yeah, the Mona Lisa is, is to be heralded. I, big deal. I mean, the I'm only big deal is it's, it's about to, it's the technicality of art, okay. the shading, the blending. The shading, but I mean, pigment. but I, when it comes to visually, do I connect to the Mona Lisa? I absolutely yeah, don't. I do I connect? to the things that I have seen in the art museums, I absolutely don't. Mm -hmm. And so that's art, but it's not my art. It's not the art that makes me feel inspired. And so I'm trying to create a narrative artistically and visually that my kids and other little girls and little boys can see and feel connected to. Yeah, because representation is important. It's very important. It's very and so important. Women, and then as a woman who wants to empower other women, mm -hmm. I make these, these pictures as well. I make these paintings for them as well because mm -hmm. everything in the world, especially if you are a woman of color, everything, everything you look at, everything that's, mm -hmm. that's marketed, everything that's heralded is not about just being who you are. Mm -hmm. It's not about that. And like you said, representation is everything. And so I mm -hmm. need women to remember it is not about collagen injections in your lips. It is right. not about a boob job. It is not about mm -hmm. having a Brazilian butt lift. It is not about any of those things. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, those women have made it difficult for us regular round girls. Mm -hmm. And for the girls that will never be round, that will never have these big boobs and big, they have made it to where this is the unattainable standard of beauty or to obtain that standard of beauty, you got to lose something of yourself. And so mm -hmm. I want to make paintings where people don't feel the need to lose anything. They just mm -hmm. can celebrate everything that they have and everything mm -hmm. that they are. So Absolutely. that's uh, very important to me. I will hopefully be joining you on this whole book journey very soon. <laughs> Right. I'll hopefully be able to be like, your turn for the interview, Sissy, because yeah. <laughs> it's coming. I'm a fictional writer, you know, and that is something that I've done. Poetry and writing is something I've done it's literally since third grade. Mm -hmm. um, and I've thankfully had, I've had some successes and I'm just waiting for it to become where art is, is not only what I do for my sanity, but it is what sustains my life so right it's coming it has to it's coming it yeah it it's to. a 2020 vision like yeah. uh it's yeah. happening so it we're gonna start to. our podcast and we'll talk more about that um but we, we're gonna start our podcast and a lot of this is gonna be about um black creatives and we're gonna talk yeah. about your books you're gonna read some of your pages yes of, yes yes um, absolutely and you're gonna finish look it's finished. Hangers. But okay. So once wow. once the production of the the first the first one is done, it's done. We just okay. gotta get it edited and printed. Yeah. It's done. Okay. The publishers, the she'll be working, they'll be working on it. Yes. It's so that's why that's why we waiting on monkey wrench in it, but yeah, it's coming, child. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. there. It's there. Okay. I mean, is there and I'm keeping I literally two days ago bought an idea book mm -hmm. so like as these things I last night no lie came up with two characters what if there was okay. a set of twins named Code and Rainy Code is the boy Rainy is the girl right <laughs> so Rainy Cold and Rainy mm -hmm. Cold and Rainy Ooh, that's and so right so can you feel it can you feel it happening can you feel yes yeah. so cold and rainy and then berry tingles that's another one but that's gonna be an adult that's gonna be more berry tingles and the peppermint sex mysteries that's gonna be another one <laughs> but it's gonna be good <laughs> but isn't that can you imagine if you've seen that right can't you see that book? Berry Tingles great. and the Peppermint Sex Mystery. You gotta pick that up. You gotta pick that up. Wow. What's what Peppermint Sex? Peppermint. Like, where is it going? What's that? That's the whole. 
That's we, part of the mystery. Pretty cool. I <laughs> mean, That's up. the mystery. Hurry up. So and yes, that. yes, and so I'm I, every little thing that this quarantine is inspiring. Mm. I'm noting it. I'm journaling. Mm. People, journal, oh, journal, yeah. journal, journal. Absolutely. We are living in history right now. Absolutely. And, and it's definitely something to combat the crazy. Mm-hmm. So to combat the, the monotony of being stuck in the house. But <laughs> I, right. I just thank you for this opportunity. Um, and I thank you again for writing your truth down and sharing it with the world. Well, I thank you for taking the time to be um, a critic of it, albeit positive, it's all positive. Um, and I appreciate you just being there for me and for everybody, because you touch more than me, but I don't care about them except my Right, life. right. <laughs> right now, so. Right, it is. It's all about you. This is your time. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And for your mates, of course. Yeah. It's still yeah. about me. All right. It's all about you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love you, sis. I love you. All right. Okay. Uh, nope. Mom, can I see here?